Good morning, everybody. My name is Mark, and welcome to the very first episode of a segment we like to call What the Heck Are You Doing? So, we are here this morning. We have a very distinguished guest. Uh, you may not be familiar with this uh, lady, but her name is Lula May Pate from Arkansas. That's a whole other country we hear. Uh, but many of you probably know her as our very famous mayor, Luz Hardman. Welcome, Luz. I'm really glad you're here this morning. Thank you, Mark. Mark, you are just wonderful. I enjoy being with you every time I'm with you. And what a nice ride it's been with you and your congregation. It's been, so, it's been something to watch. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time. We're here to find out what the heck are you doing? <laughs> First of all, well, isn't technology great? I just did this with my grandchildren the other day, so it's wonderful. So you're introducing me as a name that nobody even recognizes. And where, where did this name Luz come from? Tell us the story. So very quick story. I can make them real long, but I'll make it real quick. My father took us to Oklahoma City because he couldn't make any money being a farmer. We lived in the projects in Oklahoma City. Wow. And right beside our, our apartment was this beautiful hill. And so I was the only girl. My brothers and I were very much outdoor kids. And so we would take, we didn't have to have snow. We would take uh, trash can lids, those old steel ones, yeah. and grab the handles, and down that hill we'd go. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you that I was dead gum good at it. Yeah. Can you tell I'm from LA? I say dead gum it. I don't know if you can say that on TV, Luz. Bad gummit. So anyway, I would go down that hill, and one of the neighbors began to call me the luge. Oh, that's cool. As in the sled. Sure. And so I, and my brother started calling me luge, luge, and they couldn't say luge, so it was luge. And, you know, uh, coming from the South, uh, we all have two names. In high school, my best friends were uh, Sharon Joe, Ruth Ann, and Judy Fay. And I was Lula May. So when I, I really didn't like that name. I didn't like it. I was named after both my grandmothers. And so when this nickname came along, I grabbed it. Very and you know, cool. when I went for office, Mark in, in Waynesville, I had to put my real name, of course. But if I had just put Lula May Hardman, nobody would have known who that was, I don't think. Yeah. And so I had to do the little quote thing. Well, Mayor so Lou sounds story. a lot That's better. That's the rest of that story. <laughs> that sounds, Mayor Lou is much better to me. Yeah. I don't know. Mayor Lou May, I may just call you that. Since you're a lame duck mayor, I can just call you whatever I want now. I you can, you can. <laughs> and get away with it. And get away with it. Plus, you're not even actually. I've been called worse, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we may get to that here in just a minute. Um, you were a teacher for many years in the district, a very well-loved teacher. You were even teacher of the year in the state, but what in the heck, what the heck are you doing becoming mayor of Waynesville? What, what caused you to want to be mayor? You know, uh, I had always taught government and history and civics and those type of classes, social studies. And uh, when I left office, I was retired for two years and then I decided I, I didn't want to just sit on the couch and read. And so I had a deep desire, I really did. I really had a deep desire to make my town better. And especially our downtown, which at that time was just, uh, I called it the armpit of the world. It was horrible. 70% yeah. uh, of the buildings were neglected and abandoned. And so I had a deep desire to make my town better. And I said, you know, I'm going to run for city council and see what I can do. And that's how I got involved. And, you know, I kind of thought to myself, you know, I always preach to those kids about getting involved. And so by George, I'm doing it. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I, for one, am really glad that you did get involved. I've been in Waynesville. Uh, of course, I've been in the area since 1966, but I moved to Waynesville in 90, so I've been here 30 years. Wow. And uh, the change, especially in the last several years, is really remarkable. Um, and dramatic, I think, downtown. Because oh, absolutely. Because of the grant, the grant that we got. And I like to tell people, you know, we did that grant in 2005 when I was on city council, and we got new lights and new sidewalks. And ever since then, Mark, and you're, you're a builder, you, you know what I'm talking about. We had so much interest and renewed interest in downtown that I, I, I like to say that uh, approximately $5 million has been invested in downtown Waynesville. Wow. Since we did that little grant 
yeah. that probably cost the city fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Sure. So it was a great investment. Well, I when I ride my motorcycle, I love to go through small towns, and I love it when they have a town square. Right. And as far as Missouri, I think we have the best. It's just Very good. beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, along that line, with all the things that that you have accomplished as mayor here in Waynesville, what would you say is your proudest accomplishment? What's what? What do my you like the best? Proudest accomplishment of being mayor. Yeah, being mayor. I would probably say my children. But I'm most proud of my mayor achievements. I would, you'd have to say downtown revitalization, number one. Okay. And the fact that we succeeded in getting our Laughlin Park designated uh, as a part of the National Historic Trail, that was amazing. Uh, we're a certified stop on the National Historic Trail uh, okay. because of the Trail of Tears encampments. The other thing, uh, two years ago when we did the accessible playground in the community, you guys were all involved in that. Uh, it was a wonderful experience, and we are one of the just few rural communities who have an accessible playground. In fact, just a year ago, one of my old students is uh, uh, very active in Warrensburg, and she had taken our idea and built an accessible playground there in Warrensburg, and I actually went up, and they invited me up for the dedication. And I am a very uh, proud of uh, rebuilding the infrastructure in Waynesville and bringing it up to really, I think, a level that will take us 20, 30 years into the future. Yeah. And uh, we don't have time for me to tell you all the things that we've done. Sure. Uh, our staff has been amazing. Our departments have been amazing. I, I am proud of improved communication with our citizens. I think most people in Waynesville know they know me. Maybe they don't, but you know, really know me but they feel like they can call me up and, or they can talk to me on Facebook. And I've, I've been very proud of the fact that I was always accessible. And yeah. lastly, I hope that people will remember me because we worked so hard to improve our relationship uh, with St. Robert and with Fort Leonard Wood. And I think uh, that's something that we'll all look back and be proud of. Yeah. All, all I can say is four more years, four <laughs> more years. <laughs> I was waiting uh, for it. lock her up, lock her up. <laughs> well, maybe I don't know if if that'll keep you there. We'll do that. <laughs> we don't have a jail. <laughs> yeah. We'll just put you in the jail. You can you can uh, govern from there. Um, <laughs> being being mayor, you probably haven't experienced always everyone agreeing with everything that you do by any means. <laughs> um. <laughs> Well, so, probably the best example, Mark, would be the roundabout. <laughs> oh, the roundabout. I love the roundabout. <laughs> I love the roundabout. I will tell you that there's not a week that goes by that I don't get a compliment on the roundabout really? and how well it keeps traffic going there at that intersection. But you think back to when we were doing that. Oh, yeah. It was horrible. I, I tell people that I, I think people thought that it was kind of the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> for Waynesville. And in fact, one lady, I, I kept the letter. One lady wrote me and she said, this is the death of Waynesville. Wow. Putting in this traffic circle is the death of Waynesville. It's just amazing. Uh, you know, some of the things that you go through. And uh, another, I don't know if I can, y'all cut this out if you have to, okay. <laughs> but once there, there was quite an upset over uh, some things here a couple of years ago. And one guy, uh, got, started this little thing of uh, I was a lesbian hillbilly mayor <laughs> after <laughs> I'm sorry I laugh every time I say it uh, after my marriage you know of 42 years <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know my response to them was you know if I was gay I'd really own that <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a long time to be in the closet Lou. <laughs> that's a deep closet so it's been interesting Mark I, I uh, it took me about a, a month, I think, when I first got elected. It took me about a month to get over things hurting me personally. Yeah. And you just, when you're elected office, you just really have to realize a lot of this is not personal. Sure. It's the fact that they don't agree with you. Yeah. And, and they don't, you know, like what you've done, the decisions that you've made. So yeah. um, I remember my husband telling me one time I would come home with tears in my eyes. And he would say, you know, You've either got to decide whether you're going to do this job or tell them to kiss your butt and just get on down the road. So <laughs> in my head, that kind of became my motto. So. 
I need to write that down. We may put that on the wall somewhere. <laughs> I, it, it became my motto. It really did. And, you know, because uh, you weren't, I don't even know if you were here then when we were trying to do the downtown uh, project, but people on the city council voted against it. Mm. And every time we had a city council meeting, I fought these people yeah. trying to get them to believe that we needed some change. And so it was a really uh, stressful time for me. Well, let's go on the other side of stressful. Let's uh, do. Give us your funniest moment as mayor okay. of Waynesville. Okay. I, I, we, we talked, obviously we cheated a little bit and talked about some of these topics before, but what are you talking about? Any, Luz? Anytime what? I think about funny, I don't think about people, you know, adults. I think about kids. And so right away I began to go into the schools because one of the things that I wanted to do was let the kids know what their mayor looked like. And I would tell you, I can't go to Wal. Of course I don't go to Walmart now, yeah. but I can't go to Walmart or into stores without hearing somebody whisper to their mother. The mayor's in the next aisle. The mayor's over there. I love that. I think kids. That's me, Luz. That. I do that. I do that too when I see you. I, you, I know you do. And you usually come up and hug me. Won't be doing that any, anytime soon either. But but I think kids need that. Kids need to see, you know, people. Um, I, I don't. I can't remember one mayor when I was growing up. Yeah. And I, you know, my kids, my stu my citizen kids. In Waynesville, they know who I am. But so here's just a couple of things. First time I went to East Elementary to speak, I said, any questions? This little girl raised her hand and said, ma'am, are you the president of Waynesville? <laughs> I thought that was a great question. Great question. <laughs> and I said, kind of, kind of. And in fact, when I, I'm working on my book right now, one of my chapters, is that's, that's the title of it. Another time, and I just found this the other day going through a lot of my I've been calling them treasures, but somebody had written me a, a, a thank you note for coming to their class. And it said, thank you for wasting your time with us. <laughs> and then it said, but we learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Another kid. Any questions? Ma'am, uh, ma can you be overthrown? <laughs> I think this was like a fourth grader. Where did this kid ever even hear this word? We, we need and, to keep an eye then, on him. A, a couple of years ago, uh, Wood Elementary had me out for career day, and I was standing next to these soldiers, and I don't know what they were, uh, I mean, it was the dog, they had the canine dog. So these little girls were walking past me, and one of them says to the other, hey, that's the mayor of Waynesville. And the other little girl, loud enough for me to hear, and the soldier next to me to hear, uh, she said, oh, that's not the real mayor of Waynesville. And the soldier stopped her and said, she really is the mayor of Waynesville. And that little girl said, no, she's not. I know what Trump looks like. <laughs> 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 and then I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave you with a zinger, Mark. Well, these are good. Uh, and, and again, this really did happen. And uh, I, I said, any questions? And I think I was at freedom when this little boy did this. And I don't want to cry. But this little boy raised his hand and said, so... You're the mayor. Do you send the army to war? <laughs> Do you send the army to Iraq, he said. Because if you are, would you not pick my daddy to go this time? He's already gone three times. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That'll get your attention. <laughs> That's going to make me cry. <laughs> no. Kids can do that to you. They make you laugh and then they make you cry. <laughs> But that was a real zinger. Well, I appreciate love, love the kids. Love the kids. Yeah, those kids are great. I appreciate you wasting your time with us this morning. <laughs> um, before we uh, head off, though, um, the title of the segment is "What the heck are you doing?" And uh huh. So we've been quarantined uh -huh. for quite a while, and so we want to know your top six uh, tips for surviving. Quarantine. What the heck are you doing in quarantine? Your top six tips. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. I, I decided that I would talk to the people, you know, because I'm a mayor and I've got to be thoughtful and a, poli and a politician. And I want to talk to you about growth. Okay. And so these are my six tips for staying at home during this coronavirus quarantine thing. 
Okay, we're going to number start. one is oh, well, number. We're going to start with six. We're, I'm I'm just like David Letterman. You got to you got to give me that. This is top six. Oh, sorry. Number number six. Well, the first thing is we want to work on our relationships. So number six is call and reconnect with friends. Well, that's a good one right there. We got time to do that. We should be doing that. Number five. And number five, you've got to work on your hygiene. Yeah, that's important. And, you know, I told you that I washed my hair just for you today. Yeah. Well, I want everybody to shower at least once a week, whether you need it or not. <laughs> Put that down. It's very important. Especially if you're not by yourself or living alone. That is correct. I think maybe we could do twice a week. Okay, number four. Number four, I want you to work on your home. And I want you to know... Um, that I have the cleanest house in, in the whole county. You can come in my house. It is the cleanest and best organized house in the whole county, and that's what you need to be doing. Yeah, but we're not supposed to come in your house, so we'll never actually know. But I would invite you. <laughs> I, I would step six feet back, and you could come in. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, these are great. How about number three? Number three, let's work on culture. So I want you to read some books. That's what I've been saying to my grandchildren. And I want you to watch some classic movies. Classic movies. If you've never seen Casablanca, if you've never seen Gone with the Wind, those are. this is the time to do that. And watch them with your kids. If your kids have never seen Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz, pull that thing out. But you got to have them sit close to you during the Flying Monkeys. That's still scary. There you go. I'm telling you, they scared me to death when I first saw that as a child. <laughs> Uh, number two. Number two is physical education. Oh, that's you a bad You've got to get outside at least once a day. Okay. And for me, it usually involves taking my golf uh, club and my wiffle balls and playing golf around my house. Okay. I also live in a nice uh, neighborhood over here in West Waynesville, and, and we have some nice hills. And so it is a good walking place. Okay. So good number two. Take a step away from the refrigerator, perhaps as well, is a good is a good exercise. Well, actually, that's my number one. Uh, oh, so that's I know you're gonna have to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, those are great. Okay. How about number one? Number one, got to work on your culinary habits. Okay. Whether it's cooking, but I just have one motto for all of you: step away from the fridge. Step away from the fridge. That's the if best. If you part. are tempted. Step back from the fridge. That's it. Great. That'll get you through this. I promise you it will. Well, hopefully we will start to get back to some sort of, I don't even know what to even call normal, but hopefully we'll eventually take some yeah. steps back that direction. I'll um, give you a history lesson you can cut out if you want, but okay. President, Hard President Harding was not the brightest tool in the drawer. <laughs> and when he was running for office, his motto was back to normalcy. Yeah. Normalcy is not a word. Normalcy is not a word. I tell no. this story all the time. It's normality. But I he didn't know missing. that. You know what was odd about that, Marcus? He was a newspaper editor. Really? Yes. He should have known that. Now, see, when I tell the story, I say that was Ulysses S. Grant that said normalcy for the first time. Nope. So I'm wrong. It was Harding. Warren G. Harding. How about that? Yep. See, you're not only fun, you're educational. I am. I'm full of history stuff anyway. <laughs> Well, um, our time is sort of getting away from us this morning, but okay. before we go, uh, I want to point out your wardrobe choice this morning. You're wearing oh. one of my very favorite shirts. Yes, That's they are. I've favorite. actually worn this on my vacations. Let's see that shirt. I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can I, Mark, can I tell the story about when you gave this shirt to me and, and asked me to wear it? And I said, well, sure, I'll wear it. I thought it was great. And... So I guess y'all took a picture of me, I believe, and it yep. appeared on your Sunday morning slideshows. And it wasn't probably the next week. Someone began, like people began to call me. Have you switched churches? <laughs> people at Westside Baptist were very concerned. Have you switched churches? No, I was just, you know, I'll do anything. And Mark asked me to wear the shirt. So that's what I did. And I love it. I get more compliments on the shirt. Well, very cool. And everybody knows where this comes from, don't you? What do you mean? Where it comes from? It comes from Seinfeld. It does? The, the little old lady in Seinfeld who said, I love Jesus. Oh, but I drink a little. But I drink a little. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was the Ellen show. 
I'm all confused on uh, my, my... Yes, you're right. It's the little old lady from Ellen. So cut that out. Cut, cut my mistake out. <laughs> it was the little old lady from no, Ellen. No, I want people to know I was wrong about Grant, but I was right about Ellen. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. That'll work. All right. Um, well, thank you very much for your time, Luz. I personally think you were a great mayor. We're going to miss you. Um, I think there may be still time for you to jump in the presidential election. Um, maybe you could build up some momentum by November, but... Would you be my uh, fundraiser? I, I'm not the best at fundraising, but I'll, I'll be like your spokesman. I'll go out in front and take the heat for you. Well, and, and I'll end. You asked me what I was going to do in the future, and I'll end with this, uh, this comment. I am off to see my seven grandchildren, yeah. and the governor appointed me to the Route 66 Bicentennial Commission, and that's going to keep me busy. And anybody that knows me knows I love to travel. And uh, I will pro if we ever get back on the cruise ships, yeah. I will be leading the line dancing on the Lido deck. So <laughs> watch for me there. A video or I enjoyed, a I enjoyed being with you guys. That was great. Well, thank you very much, Luz. Uh -huh. uh, God bless you. So now we know what the heck are you doing? <laughs> um, and so thanks for hanging with us this morning, guys. I uh, want to make just a quick, give you a quick uh, information. The T-shirt that Luz was wearing is part of a promotion that we're going to be doing uh, that we will um, put a link in the comments and let you know some more about that. And we'll talk some more about it at the end of the service today. It's called For Pulaski and it's one of those t-shirts going to be made for made available for everyone. And the proceeds are going to go to help so many people that are in need right now. So uh, join in with that. We'll have these, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little t-shirts all over the county. It'll be great. Thanks for being here, Luz, and thanks for hanging with us this morning, guys. Have a great day.